Good evening, viewers. Tonight, our headlines are marked by tragic accidents, legal developments, and incidents that underscore the complexities of law enforcement and safety in our communities. Firstly, a fatal motorcycle accident in Meetenmere Zorg claims the life of Mark Paul, sending shockwaves through the community. Our team will provide updates on the incident, highlighting the importance of road safety awareness. In another heartbreaking incident, a Venezuelan national tragically loses their life at a Vreed and Hoop construction site. Our reporters will be investigating the circumstances surrounding this tragedy and its impact on the local community. Switching to legal matters, a farmer is granted bail following allegations of sexual activity. Our court correspondents will delve into the details of the case, exploring the legal proceedings and the implications for the accused. Meanwhile, Dudnoff Parbati faces charges of sexual assault in a study incident. Our team will be covering the legal proceedings, providing insights into the case and the challenges of addressing such sensitive issues. In charity, a laborer finds himself charged with simple larceny, shedding light on the complexities of theft cases in rural communities. On the narcotics front, Madho Prasad is charged with possession, highlighting ongoing efforts to combat drug-related activities in our region. Tragedy strikes once more as a boat mishap claims the life of a Warapoka village businessman. Our team will be investigating the circumstances surrounding this tragic incident, emphasizing the importance of safety measures in maritime activities. Stay with us as we bring you comprehensive coverage, expert insights, and the latest updates on these diverse stories throughout the evening. Fatal motorcycle accident claims life of Mark Paul in Medanmir Zorg. Tragedy struck early this morning on the Medanmir Zorg Public Road, West Coast Demerara, as a fatal motorcycle accident claimed the life of 32-year-old motorcyclist Mark Paul of Samaru Dam, Powder Oyan, West Bank Demerara. According to reports from the police, the accident occurred around 02, 31 hours today when Paul was riding motorcycle hashtag CL8032 westward along the southern side of the road. Unfortunately, he lost control of the bike, veered into a trench, and collided with a wooden bridge, sustaining severe head and other injuries. Paul was found in a semi-conscious state by the police and promptly transported to the Leonora Cottage Hospital for medical attention. Despite efforts to save his life, he tragically succumbed to his injuries at approximately 04, 35 hours this morning. Following protocol, the motorcycle involved in the accident has been taken to the Leonora Police Station for examination by a licensing and certifying officer. The body of the deceased has been transported to Ezekiel Mortuary for storage pending a post-mortem examination. <laughs> Tragic death of Venezuelan national at Breed N. Hoop construction site. The Ministry of Labor, in collaboration with the police, is currently leading investigations into the untimely death of Ruspel Jesus Rangelazakar, a 36-year-old Venezuelan national, who tragically lost his life on Saturday night at the Artificial Island construction site in Breed N. Hoop. According to initial reports, Azokar, who was employed as a health and safety helper with Gas Total Solution, was involved in placing a barrier around a hole with water on the southern half of the site key wall when he accidentally fell into the hole and drowned. It was noted that Azokar was not wearing a life vest at the time of the incident. In response to this devastating event, the company has taken immediate action by suspending construction operations while investigations are ongoing. The Ministry of Labor emphasizes the mandatory requirement for individuals to wear life jackets on work sites in such areas, and Minister Joseph Hamilton has expressed profound concern over the increasing number of injuries and accidents occurring on job sites. The Occupational Safety and Health OSH, Department underscores the critical importance of strict adherence to workplace health and safety regulations to minimize the risk of workplace accidents. <laughs> Farmer granted bail following allegations of sexual activity. Kevin Gordon, a 47-year-old farmer hailing from Henrietta, Essequibo Coast, has been granted bail amounting to $300,000 pending further court proceedings after allegations arose of his involvement in sexual activity with a child. Gordon appeared virtually last week at the Suddy Magistrates Court, presided over by Magistrate Esther Sam, where the charge was formally presented to him. 
he was not required to enter a plea during the initial hearing. Subsequently, Gordon was granted bail in the sum of $300,000. The case has been adjourned to March 1st, when further court action is expected to take place at the Sutty Magistrates Court. Didnoth Parbati charged with sexual assault in Sutty incident. Didnoth Parbati, a 66-year-old laborer residing in Sutty housing scheme, Essequibo Coast, was charged on Thursday for allegedly sexually assaulting a woman in October 2023. Parbati, also known as Ramesh, stands accused of assaulting a woman in Sutty last year. The matter was brought before the Sutty Magistrates Court, presided over by Magistrate Esther Sam. During the court proceedings, Parbati pleaded not guilty to the charges leveled against him. He was subsequently granted bail in the sum of $50,000. However, as a condition of his bail, Parbati is required to report to the Sutty Police Station every Monday at 9 o'clock hours. The case has been adjourned to March 1st at the Sutty Magistrates Court for the disclosure of statements. Laborer charged with simple larceny and charity incident. Huey Anthony Corlett, a 26-year-old laborer from Charity, Essequibo Coast, has been charged with the offense of simple larceny, allegedly committed against Ronaldo O'Neill, a 31-year-old individual from Mabaruma, Northwest District in Region 1. The incident is said to have occurred on Monday, 6 February 2024, at Charity River Dam, Essequibo Coast. Corlett was formally charged under Section 164 of the Criminal Law Offenses Act, Chapter 801. The case was brought before the Sutty Magistrates Court on Thursday last, presided over by Magistrate Esther Sam. During the hearing, the charge was read to Corlett, who pleaded not guilty. Subsequently, bail was granted in the sum of $200,000. The case has been adjourned to March 1, 2024, at the Sutty Magistrates Court for the disclosure of statements. Madho Persaud charged with narcotics possession in Essequibo Coast incident. Madho Persaud, a 52-year-old driver from Riverstown, Essequibo Coast, has been charged with two counts of possession of narcotics for the purpose of trafficking following an incident on Tuesday last at Walton Hall, Essequibo Coast. According to the police report, Persaud was arrested with a total of 119 grams of cannabis and 28.6 grams of cocaine. He appeared at the Sutty Magistrates Court on Thursday, 8th of February 2024, where Magistrate Esther Sam presided over the case. During the court session, Persaud pleaded not guilty to both charges. While bail was initially objected to by the prosecutor, it was eventually granted in the sum of $200,000 for the cannabis charge and $100,000 for the cocaine charge. The bail conditions include the requirement for Persaud to report at the Sutty Police Station every Monday at 09.00h. The cases have been adjourned to March 1, 2024, at the Sutty Magistrates Court. In a related development, the Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit CANU, reported intercepting a motor car with a large quantity of creepy, a foreign cannabis, on the same day and at the same location where Persaud was arrested. The driver of the vehicle, Romario Stoll, was also brought before Magistrate Esther Sam on Friday. Stoll was remanded to prison and is scheduled to appear in court again on March 1, 2024. Tragic Boat Mishap Claims Life of Warapoka Village Businessman Van West Charles, a 26-year-old businessman hailing from Warapoka Village, Northwest District, NWD, in Region 1, Barimawini, tragically lost his life in a boat mishap on Friday, in the vicinity of the mid part of the 99 turns, Northwest District. According to police reports, the incident occurred around 17.05h when Charles was captaining a small boat approximately 16 feet in length, colored red and blue, powered by a 40 horsepower Yamaha engine. Reports indicate that he collided with another boat transporting passengers, resulting in him falling into the water. Despite efforts to seek medical attention, Charles succumbed to his injuries. The captain of the passenger vessel, 43-year-old Noel Malveen Evans of Charity Housing Scheme, 
Essequibo Coast, reported the incident to the police. Evans, a holder of a coxswain license for the past two years, operates a 22-foot speedboat powered by a 200-horsepower Yamaha engine, transporting passengers from interior locations to charity. Evans recounted that on Friday morning, he picked up four passengers from Ayana Bakdam, Barama, Northwest District, intending to transport them to charity and Mauka, respectively. While navigating a turn at a moderate speed in the mid-area of the 99 turns, NWD, Charles approached in his boat at a fast rate in the opposite direction. Despite attempts to avoid a collision, Charles' boat crashed into Evans' vessel, causing him to fall into the river. Charles was promptly rescued from the water by Evans and passengers, but unfortunately, he sustained fatal injuries. Despite transportation to the Kumaka District Hospital, Charles was pronounced dead on arrival by medical personnel. The body of Van West Charles is currently at the Kumaka District Hospital's mortuary awaiting a post-mortem examination. No foul play is suspected, and Evans is cooperating with ongoing investigations.